You are watching William Patterson University Television. Welcome back. As we head to the pitch overseas, the soccer crew is here to break down the latest in the European Champions Cup. Alec, we'll go to you first. Big games this week. What was one that stood out to you? The one that stood out to me the most was Tottenham embarrassing Borussia Dortmund. And I'm just going to say, it's an embarrassment that they were even considered to be in this game. You're talking about a team that's not the top of the Premier League in England versus a team that's the top of the league in Germany. And then the English team wins. They have even possessions as we look at the screen now. It's three goals for Tottenham with a possession of 53% against 47. Five saves for Tottenham, meaning that Borussia Dortmund was pushing them a little bit more. But Tottenham had six corners, which means that they were forcing Borussia Dortmund's defense to clear the ball behind them. They couldn't even clear it upfield because they were just running all over the place. I'll say this. This may be a bold take. Tottenham didn't win that game. Borussia Dortmund lost that game. Tottenham fouled more. They were off sides more, 3-1. to one. They had lower shots on goal to shots percentage. Borussia Dortmund controlled the game going into halftime. They're losing their grip on this game and in their own league back home. I'll say it right off the top. That team needs to get it together, and I think uh, Mario Gotze needs to be the person who gets that thing going. He has no goals and no assists with over 300 minutes on the field, and he's the top paid player on that team. I love that you're an Olympic, or not an Olympic, but a World Cup hero, but right now you're being kind of an Olympic or World Cup failure. Mateo, you see the same thing here? Um, I, can, I can agree with him. Like, the Boris and Dortmund, they, I don't know what game they were playing. They were, <laughs> they were supposed to win. Like, they have 10 goals during the stage group, and they only allowed two goals in six games. So how are you going to allow three goals in one game when in six games you only allow two? And at the end of the day, you're going back home to play again. Like, now you have, you have to score four if you want to win and three if you want to tie. So they're against the rope, and they got to pay Bayern Munich soon. So I don't think they're going to pass it. Danny? Well, I do agree. They do have their defensive struggles. But I'm going to give more credit to Tottenham. And for me, it starts with the head coach, Mauricio Pochettino. He set it up perfectly for them, going with the three in the back and then with two wingbacks in the middle. So the two wingbacks would have to play defense and then they would be able to be catalysts on offense. And this allowed Jan Vertonghen to have an amazing game. He was able to track back, which he does best, and then produce amazing crosses, and he even scored a goal. See, like I said, he had a goal and an assist. So for me, Jan Vertonghen, man of the match. Definitely a big game there. Another big game this week. Uh, Mateo, we'll go to you for this one. Man, you defeated by Paris Saint-Germain. Oh, How big was this for both teams? It was supposed to be a big game. Like, we knew PSG. Like, all they do is they score goals back in League One. So they were supposed to score a goal, but they didn't have Neymar, they didn't have Cavani, and they were supposed to lose, right? They were the underdogs because Manchester United had an 11 game streak. I had my hopes up on Manchester United, and they let me down completely. If we see the stats, look, they have 17 fouls. How are you gonna beat, how are you gonna foul a team 17 times if, you, if you're supposed to be the home team, you wanna have the ball, right? Look, you have three corner kicks, you have 44 possession, and one record. Of course, it will be a record for Manchester United, for Pogba, the star of the team, right? Um, I don't know what game Pogba was playing. I was very disappointed with him. He had eight goals, six assists on the past 11 games. 11 games, he had eight goals, six assists. And look, if we have, if we see this right here, now now they're going back to PS, uh, to Paris. They have Linger and Mancher injured for three weeks. So now they are against the ropes, two down, and Neymar, uh, Cavani's probably gonna be back by then. So. It's just completely disappointment by Manchester United. Danny? I would agree. I watched the whole I watched the whole 90 minutes of that game. And I tell you, I was so disappointed in Man U. They were they were supposed to make it competitive. They were supposed to make it a game. And then they completely wet the bed. So basically, basically, they let PSG get into the game playing around with the ball as they got more comfortable and comfortable and they completely broke it down. Not and, PSG. Not, just not to break it down, not PSG, a 20-year-old Mbappe. <laughs> He's 20-year-old, guys. And yeah, no, that, when you have a 20-year-old and a 40-year-old embarrassing you on both sides of the field, that's, that's uh, hurtful in both ways. A geriatric old man on the left, and uh, I mean, someone who just graduated high school yesterday on the right-hand side, and you're fully grown men in the middle, and you can't figure out how to play defense when you're the best team in England. Uh, you're an embarrassment is what you are. <laughs> and now, like, uh, we have a graphic for Alessi Sanchez. He's getting paid 500,000 euros a week, a week. 
This is not a month, this is not a year. This is a week. He had zero shots on goal, zero passes created. Look, if we see right here, zero keys. He played 47 minutes. If you get paid $500,000 a week, you're supposed to do a lot more than that. He was supposed, like when he used to play at Arsenal, he was supposed to be this big star. Oh my God, Alexis Sanchez. And now he goes back to Manchester United as Pogba. When big games come, where are these people? They're, they're supposed to be the star of the game. Bright lights, but no one can find them. That's, that's the most embarrassing part of it. Look, Man U isn't a legacy anymore. Rooney is gone. Van Persie is gone. Zlatan is gone. Find out what your identity is. You, PS, like Danny said, PSG played safer. They played with less risk. I mean, Di Maria was literally walking in the first half. You have your, your winger is walking to points to get his passes in. The, you have to, Ashley Young, I don't know what you were mm. doing. I don't know what game you were playing, whether you were trying to watch stuff on Hulu on your phone. <laughs> You know, a stranger thinks it's a great series, man. I get it, but you gotta you gotta play soccer right now. PSG was playing their arc without arguably their biggest star in Neymar. All the money they played him, they paid him. They had two goals, four yellow cards, five corners, one save on the day. You didn't even pressure them. One save, you couldn't even pressure them. They are a three-headed monster with two of the heads missing, and you couldn't do that. I mean, that's just embarrassing for Manchester United. Just so you remember, the first, the only shot they got. It was at the fifth minute. After yeah. that? They were gone. After that, they were, they were gone. They were gone. <laughs> Gigi Buffon was chilling the whole game. It was like, uh, but like ever since Mourinho took over that team, I feel like I've been like watching the decline of a dynasty. It's like watching the modern day Dallas Cowboys. It's, it's just an embarrassment to even have them around now, on, the, on the field. As we look forward to next week's games, Danny, is there one that stands out to you? Definitely. It has to be the Liverpool and Bayern Munich matchup. This, this is a great matchup. These are two teams that have equal amounts of talent. But for me, I have to go with Liverpool. As you can see their stats, they're, both teams are in somewhat decent form. But for me, I have to go with Liverpool because I love their front three of Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, and Roberto Firmino, combining for 38 goals <laughs> in the Premier League. Uh, listen, Danny, I respect you. I love having you on the desk, but Mohamed Salah is going to carry your team? This is a guy who went in there, oh, he's leading Egypt. Egypt is getting out of the World Cup group stages because of Mohamed Salah. They lost to Cameroon. You're, a, you're the best player of your country. You lost to Cameroon. Bayern Munich's taking this one home. They're too good. They're too good right now. They're hot in the league. Liverpool's best of the rest, and they always will be. That's where, that's where you're wrong. Because, look, Liverpool, okay, Liverpool right now, they're not doing that good in the Premier League. But when it comes to Champions League, just like last year, they play against the best team in England, Man City, right, as of right now, because of all the money they invert. And they still beat them at home and away. So you're gonna tell I'm I'm gonna have to go with Liverpool right now. Look, I love Hamish Rodriguez. I'm he's calling me just like I am. But at the end of the day, they don't have, they really don't have the same like amount of players. They have an amazing defense, but at the same time, Liverpool they have an amazing three forward. I'm gonna also uh, agree with Alec. There go with Bayern Munich. There, I don't know what's gonna go on, but I know it's gonna be an interesting game. That's all for this episode of WP Sports Desk. Thank you as always to our analyst crew and studio manager Al Clark. From Studio B in Hobart Hall, I'm Dante Vacatoro. We'll see you next week.